Hello, I'm James Ward, and before you enjoy this week's Comedy of the Week, I want to tell you about my new podcast, The Boring Talks, in which each week I introduce a new speaker to talk about a subject that may seem dull, but which they find interesting and illuminating. And you may too, hopefully. That's The Boring Talks, introduced by me, James Ward, and you can find it wherever you found this. This is the BBC. Hej, jag heter Sindhu. Trevligt att träffas. Welcome to the Comedy of the Week podcast, where we had a show summon. Okay, I just wanted to give you a little bit of time to digest my amazing linguistic capabilities. Yes, that was me speaking a little bit of Swedish and a little bit of Danish. Which I can, because my kids are half Danish. I mean, well, my husband is Danish, hence the kids are... Ha- yeah, you get the point. So I'm a big fan of Scandinavia. Yeah, I elska Scandinavia. And I'm an even bigger fan of Scandi Noir. I mean, how can you not be? I've already said elsewhere on this podcast that I absolutely love murder mysteries. Anywhere, any kind, absolutely rock. I love them. But then you take a murder mystery and you set it in a place which is almost always dark among people who say between 7 to 12 words an episode max and are even more restrained in their facial expressions, especially, especially if they're in a highly emotional moment. I mean, crazy factor, exponential right there. And then to top it all off, you make it constantly freezing and or snowstormy. I mean, the peril effect in Scandi Noir is absolutely through the roof. And it is beautiful. If you have never engaged with Scandi Noir, then you need to start engaging, like yesterday, okay? But meanwhile, allow me to present you with an hors d'oeuvre, or as my mother calls it, hors d'ivores. Today's comedy pick is Angstrom, The Man Who Wasn't Dead. Written by Joel Morris and Jason Hazley, who previously brought us comedy gifts such as That Mitchell and Webb Look, it's a Scandinavian detective yarn with a brooding maverick detective, Knut Angstrom, played by Matthew Holness, a.k.a. Garth Marenghi, for you cult comedy fans. Shut your eyes so it feels very dark, and enjoy Angstrom, the man who wasn't dead. Angstrom, adapted from the best-selling Angstrom trilogy by Martin English, writing as Bjorgen Swedenson. <laughs> Chapter Un. The Man Who Wasn't Dead. Snow. You never really get used to it. Even the snowman hates the snow. Fragments of his own body falling from the sky. Like standing in a rain of cold flesh. It will, eventually, even for the jolly snowman, bum him out. (laughs) The valley was cold, as cold as Gravlax. (laughs) which is a fish dish popular in Scandinavia. (laughs) And the road in the valley was cold, as cold as the valley and the Gravlax. (laughs) Inspector Knut Angstrom pulled his collar up round his beard and warmed his chin with his breath. His chin was warm, like Gravlax, but toasted Gravlax. (laughs) Dad here, sir. Good, good. Tell the Sockos to hold the roadblock. I don't want anyone leaving tire marks on my course. <laughs> no witnesses, as far as we know. We had an anonymous tip-off. Switchboard operator flagged it just after lunch. I just hope it wasn't a red herring. No. Meatballs. <laughs> That's a relief. Don't like to miss herring day. Lunchtime. Lunchtime. That means we can narrow time of death down to sometime before lunchtime, but after, say, the fourth century. 
Are you sure? That's when the Nyarlsland Peninsula was formed by volcanic activity around the North Atlantic Plate. So any time before then, and this whole place would have been underwater. And then we wouldn't have known a thing. That's how sharks get away with it. <laughs> Damn them. Is it down here? Yes. A uh, word of warning, sir. It's not a pretty sight. I've seen a dead body before, Sergeant. Oh, my God. I warned you. Where is it? Where's the body? There's nothing left. Not a thing. What happened? We were hoping you could tell us, sir. What monster could have done this? To attack a human body, to tear it apart until... until... it's simply not there anymore. <laughs> Any blood or residual tissue? No. Sure there were no witnesses? Nobody comes down in the valley since they built that new indoor valley up at Malmsteen. <laughs> so much easier to park. <laughs> what happened here? I need a drink. I think Lars has a flask of something in the car. Well, let's see if we can think better with some of that in our veins, eh? I was working on another theory, sir. I'd like to hear it. I'm not an expert like you, but... What if there's no body because... There's no murder. <laughs> There's always murder. Look at all this. The police cars, the incident tape, me. <laughs> Nobody would waste these resources on nothing. People, <laughs> people are not idiots. I am. Except you, Lars. <laughs> of course. Ah, thank you. Ah. Did you make this yourself? Yes, I make it from myself. <laughs> Good. It's warm. Warm and salty. <laughs> Against the cold. That's good. That's really good. Got any more? I will go behind the car. <laughs> the snow fell. But in the offices of bumblebeep.cod, based in Jarlsland's cutting-edge Silicon Valley, snow did not fall. A cutting-edge roof took care of that. And yet inside, a storm was brewing. Hot-haired, blue-headed young reporter, Mina Oblong, slammed her hands on the cutting-edge desk of her editor, Pilu Bremer, and pushed it back against the cutting-edge partition until his hips squeaked. <laughs> Stop it! You're hurting me! Can't take it, eh? Go on. Fire me if you want. I can't, and you know it. See, you need me too much. No, I can't fire you because you don't work here. <laughs> You're freelance. So let me follow this lead. Look, I know it's a big story. Something is rotten right to the top. Government, police, a cover-up. Why won't you carry it? Because we mainly do cat videos. <laughs> Scared, eh? No, we're an online portal providing curiositized click tent. For advertisers, we do not investigate old murders. Take a risk. You can afford to. Last time I checked, this website was making more money than Portugal. People like cat videos. Yeah, but for how long? Cats are a new thing. I don't think cats are a new thing. I'm sure they are. When did you first see a cat? Five years ago. Before then, it was just dogs. I don't think so. How would I know? I probably wasn't even born then, Grandad. I am 25. <laughs> don't try and get my pity just because you're basically nearly dead. OK, OK. You follow this hunch of yours, Mina, but I can't give you any more than 400,000 kroner, and as long as you like. Screw you, Pops. <laughs> At the police station, snow falls on the flat roof. Death hides here. In the chilly files of the archives, a cold saga of lives snuffed out, of dreams slashed in two, and of bicycles stamped with the owner's postal code. <laughs> I need the exact time that telephone tip-off was phoned in. Ah, here we go. Sunday, Monday. Happy days. <laughs> Before the murder, those were happy days. Oh, OK. Here we are, Tuesday, Wednesday... Happy days. <laughs> Thursday, that's today. Hey, give me that. It's not here. The tip-off call. It's not in the log. It's just business as usual. Unlicensed hovercraft, suspected goblin, contraband bacon, routine stuff. Then, nothing. No anonymous call, no tip-off. It's almost as if it never happened. I don't understand, sir. Somebody has stolen my murder. 
This crime just got doubled. <laughs> Mina sat on her laptop in her car in the snow. Not sitting on her laptop <laughs> like a chair, because that made the screen hard to see, but in the sense of using it. So many dead ends. Someone's got something they want to hide, and they're good, because if I can't see it, someone's hidden it hard. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. <laughs> Maybe we need to talk, Mr. Angstrom. Chief Inspector Bowles Arzol had done all the crimes in Yarsland for as long as anyone could remember and was Angstrom's immediate superior. He sat sadly behind his desk, looking over his spectacles. Then he chose a pair and put them on. <laughs> You're too close to this case, so close that you can't see it's not there. I ask you again, where's the body? Murder doesn't need a body. Yes, it does. <laughs> This isn't the first time this has happened. Remember the Janssen murder? There's a man who'd made too many enemies. Yes, but he wasn't dead. He'd fallen asleep in his car in the Lagerlof case. The whole Lagerlof family. I solved that. No, you didn't. They'd been on holiday in Finland. <laughs> OK, OK, it has happened maybe four or 20 other times since mm. I came here. <laughs> but this one's different. This is Njalsland. You're not in Stockholm anymore with its city ways. We do not need murder here any more than we need a maglev railway or a laser quest. <laughs> <laughs> this place thinks it's so civilised with its endless snow and generous childcare provision. But that's just a socially progressive blanket covering the festering cesspit underneath. Get off my desk! You're crushing my spectacles. <laughs> why, why don't you take some gardening leave? I've never done gardening. I don't know what is gardening. Well, maybe you should. Maybe you should. Angstrom, you're relieved of duty. Take some time off. Maybe you're right. I know I am. And, Knut? What? Helped yourself to some spectacles. You look like hell. <laughs> Snow fell on the garden center. <laughs> Armstrong's boot prints formed a dotted line as if the car park could be cut away from the garden center and used as a coupon for discount bedding plants. <laughs> By the gods. But, alas, the gods were dead. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? I need a lawnmower. Well, you're in the right place. We have many lawnmowers here. Mind showing me a round one? We don't have any round ones. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are all lawnmower shaped. You're the expert. What have you got? Well, uh, this one is very popular. Uh, the Kaling 430. Yep, good. I'll take it. Lovely. Hang on. That one's got a turny, roundy bit at the front. The TL21. It's an electric rotary mower. Electric? I'll take it. Two lawnmowers. I'm on gardening leave from a job where I face murder every day. I'll need all the lawnmowers I can get. <laughs> Armstrong returned to his apartment in Grotby. Grotby. The name means village of porridge. <laughs> but... There was no village anymore, <laughs> and precious little porridge. <laughs> More than half a century ago, a cluster of barns had been cleared for shopping malls, cinematheques, social clubs, and thrust through the middle like a concrete forearm, a tower of homes in a tower. I'm home. Hello? Hello? Nobody home. Hello, darling. Krista, my love. What are all these? Lawn mowers. I thought you'd like them. <laughs> like them? I love them. You know me so well. They're for me, really. I need some time. You take all the time you need, darling. <laughs> Elvin, my cheeky duck. <laughs> he has missed you. You are always at work. Not anymore. I'm going to be here now with you. <laughs> And also with you, Krista. <laughs> Here, help me in with the rest of these lawnmowers. I cannot. You know I cannot. Have you injured your back? No. You know why. Ooh, a 
I'm a ghost. <laughs> Don't go. I cannot stay. Goodbye, Knut. <laughs> Elvin. Elvin. No, don't go. And you, Krista, as well. <laughs> no! <laughs> you were never here, were you? Only in my mind. Now who will help me with my lawn mowers? <laughs> They're blocking the lift. Why did I buy these stupid things? I don't have a garden. <laughs> no amount of lawnmowers can change that. <laughs> God, it makes me mad. <laughs> Get out of my home, you lawnmowers. Get out, all of you. <laughs> I have ruined my door. <laughs> Alone in his apartment, Angstrom watched the sodium yellow container depot below, boxes moving to and fro, like blood cells. What was inside them? <laughs> Maybe, like blood cells, some contained hemoglobin, <laughs> others running shoes. <laughs> in the modern world, they are perhaps <coughs> the same. Angstrom. Armstrong poured himself a whiskey into his brandy. <laughs> I promise I'll stop. I promise you. No more death. No more murder for my dead duck and my wife. I promise it stops now. An email? Can you meet me on the 2145 ferry? I want to talk. Who are you? A friend. I will be wearing an anorak. You do the same. What is this about? Murder. Murder? I'll be there. Just one last murder, I promise. And then I will let you rest, my darling duck. And my wife. <laughs> By late evening, the Njarslin ferry was no longer packed with commuters saving the 40-minute drive up the peninsula, and the silence of the deck was pierced only by the gentle patter of snow. <laughs> and engines! What is this? I'm a journalist. I need to talk to you. I don't talk to journalists, except just then and now. I'm stopping now. This is the last thing I'm going to say to you. You don't have to talk, just listen. I don't listen to journalists. <laughs> Are you talking to me? No, I was talking to that seagull. <laughs> it's about Askeladding, the ash lad. What do you know about the ash lad? I'm still talking to the gull. <laughs> Back in 95, that was your case. I know, 15 people strangled with their own legs. <laughs> I've read the internet. <laughs> You know nothing. You weren't even born then. The lifespan of a herring gull is around 12 years, still talking to him. <laughs> it doesn't add up. I think the wrong man went down. I think the ash lad is still out there. He's dead, do you hear? In prison, stabbed in the neck with a sharpened toothbrush from the inside that made it look like a routine toilet accident. It's over, do you hear? Stop the ferry, I want to get off. You'll fall in the sea. Maybe that would be for the best. You! Dragging up the past. All that murder got me nothing, and it stops now. No more. Let me through, I'm gonna fall in the sea. I hacked into the police data stream. You lost a murder this week, down in the valley. Take me there, please. Okay, but there's nothing to see. And I wanna see that nothing with my own eyes. In the valley, fresh fall of snow had covered the scene of the murder, erasing the evidence as if it had never been there, which it possibly hadn't. Here! What is it? What do you think? It's a horrible little figure, a model. It's meant to be a troll, I think. It's him. The ash lad. He's back. I'd always imagined him bigger. Like the size of a man. No, the killer. He left it. 
These crude models were his calling card. Hang on, that wasn't in any of the reports. We never told the press to avoid copycats. The trolls meant we'd know it was him. Look at this cheeky little fellow with his three eyes, his ass forehead and his nose covered in fingers. The work of a maniac. It was on top of the fresh snow. Someone put it here since the police left. For us to find. So what can this little troll tell us? Nothing. They're made of wood. I spent two days interrogating one of these back in 95. In the end, I just had to accept it. It's not a witness, it's a clue. That's one of the things you learn in this job, to tell the difference. Come on, I think we could do with a hot drink. The bar was unremarkable. A feature which would help anyone adapting a lengthy novel for radio broadcast. <laughs> rendering a long passage of narration unnecessary and helping maintain the pace of the story. The Ash Lad is part of low folklore, isn't he? The unlikely trickster who outwits the forces of authority and wins. You seem to know a lot about this. I've read a lot of Wikipedia. In low comedy, the Ashlad or Askeladen is identified with Norway, with characters from Sweden and Denmark as his high-status rival, citation needed. <laughs> Are you OK? Nothing. I'm fine. It's just like someone trod on my grave. And the grave of my duck. And my wife. Do you want to be alone? I don't mind hiding under the table. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> OK? I'm... I like your jumper. My mother knitted it. Nice reindeer. It's a bee. <laughs> She's in a sort of clinic for people who cannot recognise or knit the shapes of animals. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. She, she'd like that. So, we have a murderer, but no body. Someone's playing with us. But that troll, I have a feeling I know who our body was before it disappeared. God, it's late. Look, I've got to get home and put some damaged lawnmowers on eBay. <laughs> Can you meet me first thing at City Hall with a bag of hammers? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> City Hall, a concrete box, cold and dispassionate, with an art gallery on the top floor, because if there's one thing Swedish architects worship in this godless world, it is metaphor. <laughs> We need to search this office. Not without the permission of Councillor Lundström. Let me guess. Councillor Lundström didn't come to work today, right? Yes. How did you know? We had a text saying she was in hospital for routine tests on her hair. Those tests are going to come back dead. <laughs> <laughs> we suspect Birgit Lundström was murdered yesterday morning. Murdered? And if you don't mind, we'd like to do some police stuff. Hammer, please. Hey, you, you can't go in there. Oh, OK, so you come. <laughs> right, we need to use our wits and these hammers. Here. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll hack her computer. You kids with your robots. They'll never replace the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> While I log on to the World Wide Web, why don't we have the conversation we had in the car on the way here again? I enjoyed that. Sure. Lundström was head of city planning. For years, we tried to connect her to Hans Lotto, the controversial construction lobbyist. I heard that she'd met him for some under-the-table lunch deal. She was careful. She gained a lot of enemies. So our man had some sort of beef with her? Chicken salad, I think. <laughs> but Lotto got a signature on a backdoor land deal. I was surprised Lundström survived last time. If the killer's back in action, she's the obvious next victim. Stop! Stop! Ah, Councillor Lundström. We were just doing some exposition about you. I tried to stop them coming in and smashing everything up with hammers, Councillor, but they had hammers. This is my office. What on earth are you doing? We're trying to solve your murder. I'm not dead. That's what they all say. Her story checks out. She is breathing. And we got here just in time. Get out. Don't worry. We were just getting. Out. <laughs> Sitting in his car, Armstrong brooded. Mina played a smartphone game where you have to make little rows of vegetables turn into fireworks while she waited for him to finish. I'm finished. Finished brooding? No, finished everything. This is over. Go, get out of my car. You should sleep on it. I'm not sleeping on my car. <laughs> not again. <laughs> Don't make me go back to those days. This is the last time we'll see each other, Mina. Goodbye. Good. Bye. 
I can still see you through the window. Go! This place. Back in his apartment, Angstrom wrestled with his thoughts. Then he karate chopped his anxieties <laughs> and boxed his emotions. I'm sorry. I failed you. I was foolish. <laughs> I was just seeing patterns that weren't there, like a hungry man staring into a plate. He imagined sausages, but there are no sausages, just painted flowers. This is how you got killed. Me, seeing sausages everywhere. <laughs> Hello? There's a bomb here in my car. I'll be right there. Armstrong raced through the streets like a man driving a car, which is exactly what he was. <laughs> Keep talking. Focus on me. Where are you? I'm at the sauna. I took the car. You're at a car sauna? I thought it might need a steam. I wanted to treat it. Oh, God. I've got the bomb. The clock, it's ticking. Don't move. It might set it off. What else can you see? Check the seats, the dash, the rear-view mirror. Look, look hard. Ah! Oh, God, she looked too hard. Have you strained your eyes? A body. A dead body in the back. Who? Who's dead in your back seat? Lundstrom. Bucky Lundstrom, the counsellor. She's dead in the back seat. Our body, at last. Well, better late than never. Hold on. <laughs> Angstrom's car sped through the night like a well-oiled bullet, fired through unusually thin air from a gun already moving at a tremendous pace. <laughs> I'm scared. She's looking at me, her dead eyes wide open. The unnatural, like chemists. You know, the chemists that stay open when you expect them to be shut. That's her eyes. Where are you? I'm on the phone. Keep talking. Oh, help me. The bomb counter is going down. They do that. If the numbers go up, the bomb never goes off. <laughs> Damn it. Our guy knows what he's doing. Where are you? I'm here. Quick, ah, so I can have a look at this bomb of yours. I'm scared. I can't die. I'm death intolerant. It makes me all stiff and cold. <laughs> Nobody's going to die today. What about her in the back seat? Apart from her. There's nothing to be scared of. It's just a bomb. It'll be wired to the electrics. So all I need to do is pull this from under the desk. <gasps> it's stopped. What did I tell you? Now let's get out of here. Oh, thank you. Oh, you saved my life. I may look a little rumpled, a little old-fashioned, but I know a few things. Like what? Well, we've got a body. We've got a bomb. I'll get forensics down. There'll be clues. There'll be detective work. There'll be a case. Young lady, we've got work to do. <laughs> Bloody Helgeland! <laughs> Armstrong needed a drink. All detectives need a drink eventually, especially after a point of dramatic crisis. He and Mina hold themselves up in a corner of the gloomy snowman bar and nursed their 600 kroner lager slammers. I couldn't help noticing you know a lot about bombs. Well, I used to set them. Ever heard of a group back in the 70s called Minor Bardhoff? You were in Minor Bardhoff? Yeah, I played keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> then I was kidnapped on the Dutch leg of the tour for our 1979 double album and brainwashed into becoming a terrorist. It wasn't a good time for me. Though I did learn a lot about bombs. Enough to stop that one going off. But it did go off. Your phone. Oh, a voice message from an unknown number. Ten to one says it's our killer. Oh, check this. It was sent before I got in the car. Must have got caught up at the message centre. This modern mobile technology. It'll never replace the mammoth. <laughs> Shh, I'm listening. Oh. Are you OK? Listen. There is an explosive device under the dashboard of your car. It's me. It's you. I did it. <laughs> I'm the killer. No, you didn't. You're a good man. Don't you see? Now this is starting to make a little sense. I'm the only person who could have done this. I needed a murder and I was prepared to kill for it. Somebody needs to stop me. And if nobody else will, I'll damn well do it myself. Stand back. I've got a gun. Don't. You don't have to die. I'll pull the trigger and I'll be out of all your lives. This goddamn rotten place is stinking to the core, and I'm the stinking rotten heart of it. The world will be better off without me. No! Sorry, that's mine. Can you hold the gun? <laughs> Hello? What? We'll be right there. What was that? 
They found another body. Same MO, little troll and everything. But you were here with me. The perfect alibi. <laughs> Next time on Angstrom. It's quiet. Too quiet in here. It's like a morgue. It is a morgue. <laughs> I want all these people interviewed. They're dead. This job never gets any easier. <laughs> Armstrong is written by Jason Hazley and Joel Morris and starred Matthew Holness, Nadia Kamal, Simon Kane, Morgana Robinson, David Reed and Freya Parker. The producer was Lindsay Fenner and it was a BBC Studios production. <laughs>